So welcome guys to PBS the Tutor. Today we'll be revising the mathematics paper 1 2017 and we'll solve some some of the uh, questions starting from question 1. So question 1 says simplify 4 open bracket x plus 2y close bracket minus 3x minus 8y close bracket. So we are, we are going to expand first then we simplify. So 4 times x that is 4 x 4 times positive 2y that is 8y then we come to the second part which is there come to the second part we've got negative times positive 3 you have a negative 3 x the negative times negative 8 you have positive 8 so when you correct the like terms we are having 4x minus 3y plus 8y plus 8y this and those you add so 4x minus 3 that is positive x positive 8y plus 8y you're having plus 16y so that's the answer for question 1 copy it properly question 2 says evaluate 27 to the power 2 over 3 so 27 is a cube of a certain number that's what we should know this number here it means 27 is a cube of a certain number so we need to find the number which we can raise to the power 3 to give us 27 and that number is 3 to the power 3 and the 2 to the power 3 so this and that one they cancel each other you remain with a 3 squared and your answer is going to be 9 question this says a straight line passing through a 3,2 b 5,1 y as a gradient of negative 2 find the value of y so first thing you need to know the formula for gradient you know that gradient is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 then from there we can proceed and we say since m has already been given as negative 2 y2 is y the same y and y1 is 2 over x2 is 5 and x1 is 3 so we can easily multiply there y minus 2 5 minus 3 that is 2 so you cross multiply 2 times negative 2 that is negative 4 is equal to y minus 2 so we're going to discover that y is equal to we're going to discover that y is equal to negative 4 plus 2 as a result y will be equal to negative 2 so first thing you know the formula for gradient then you play uh, replace properly question 4 says factorize completely 5x squared minus 5 we first need to factor out what is common 5 is common so you take it out then you can you, you can further factorize x squared minus 1 using the difference of two squares so we are going to have minus 1 then x plus 1 so that's how you factorize such a type of uh, um, problems question 5 says use set notation to describe the shaded region in the Venn diagram below when you look at what has been shaded this part and that part you are going to discover that it is A union B without the inclusion of C so C has not been included so what they have shaded is what is only in A and B. So when we remove C, we are saying intersect the complement of C. Because C is not included there. They have only shaded what is in A and B. So when they say C complement, they are saying things not found in C, only found in the union of A and B. Question seven, six, sorry. Question 6 says, given that C is equal to 5, 2, negative 1, 1, and D is equal to 1, and negative to express D as a single matrix. So to express CD as a single matrix, it means we need to multiply C and D. Now this is how we do multiplication. So we have 5, we have 2, we have negative 1, we have 1 there. So we are multiplying with it, D. So we go, so we say 5 times 1. 5 times 1 plus negative 1 times 2 negative 1 times 2 
then we go 2 times 1 plus 1 times negative 2 now 5 times 1 is 5 plus negative 1 times negative 2 that is 2 2 times 1 that is 2 1 times negative 2 that is negative 2 so as a result your answer will be 5 plus 2 that is 7 2 minus 2 that is 0 this one becomes a single matrix that's your CD question 7 says the first three terms in an arithmetic progression are 5, 7, and 9. Find the common difference and find the sum of the first 12 terms. So, what we know that? To find the common difference, to find the common difference is to get the second term minus the first term, of course. So, our second term here is 7. And our, uh, our first term here is 5. So, the difference between these two will give us what we call the common difference, and which is 2. Even when you get 9, minus 7 it will still give you 2 so that's how we find the common difference it's the first term subtracting it from the second term so we can say a2 minus a1 to find the sum of the first 12 terms we need to use the formula sum is equal to n over 2 open bracket 2a plus so open bracket n minus 1 plus bracket times d like that then we need not to replace the information any is the 12 that we're talking about so what is n we put 12 2 our first term is 5 plus our n is 12 minus 1. Our common difference was 2, remember. Then we can now go on and expand it. We are going to have 6, 10, plus 11 times 2. Therefore, we are going to have 6, 10 plus 20, 22. So you multiply 2 times 11 there. You're going to have 6 times 32. And the sum, we're going to have 192. So that's the procedure on how to find the sum using a, a arithmetic progression known as AP. The sum and the common difference. Question 8 says, in a game, the probability of a player losing is 0 0.3. What is the probability of a player winning the game? We know that probability of something happening and the probability of something not happening is equal to 0. So we can say probability of winning plus probability of not winning is equal to 1. We have the probability of a player losing. That's not winning. So we can say winning plus not winning, that is 0 0.3, is equal to 1. If I say winning is equal to 1 minus 0 0.3. And hence, the probability of a player winning should be 0 0.7. Probability is always equal to 1 or less than 1. Can we take CD? 1. B says the coordinates of B and C are 2, 5, and 4, negative 3, respectively. If M is the midpoint of BC, what is the opposition vector of M? So you need to do two things in here. That's why it's two marks. You need first to find the midpoint of BC, then you, you convert that midpoint into a vector of M. So first thing, you need to find the midpoint of BC. And the way we find midpoint is midpoint is equal to x1 plus x2 over 2 comma y1 plus y2 over 2 and in this uh, case we have our y1 as 2 plus our y2 is 4 so divide by 2 comma then our y1 that's 5 plus our y2 that's negative 3. So let me lightly provide this side. So we have our x1 
as a 2 plus our x2 that is 4 so we said bye bye 2 comma our y1 is 5 plus negative 3 as our y2 over 2 so 4 plus 2 we're having 6 over 2 comma 5 positive times negative is negative so 5 minus 3 are having 2 over 2 and there we are having what we call uh, 3 comma 1 now this is just the midpoint of m what of the position vector of m so position vector or m be equal to 3 1 so the more I get the transpose of 3 comma 1 becomes the more like a matrix that represents a vector so this is a coordinate but this here is what to call a vector and when they say a position vector always start with m or start start with o because a position vector starts from o position on the x or y frame question 9 s says given that the universal set is equal to 1 up to 8 then they set a is equal to 1 up to 4 then b is equal to 2 3 4 5 6 they're saying this t a union B complement. Now, what we know about, about A union B complement is things not found or elements or numbers not found when you add A and B together. So, first thing is let's add A and B together. That's what we're going to have. We have A there and B. So, when you when you find A union B, you are going to have one, two, three, four, five. And six. That is what A union B is. Now that the moment they say A union B complement like that, it means they want you to find the element not found among these. So elements that not found among these are what we are saying. So we can we, we, we can't see seven there. We can see eight as well. Therefore, A union B complement is seven comma eight. That's what it means. So first thing when answering this question, it says the scale of a map is 1 to 20,000. The actual area of residential plots is 60 kilometers square. Calculate the area of residential plot on the map in square centimeters. First thing we need to convert 60 square uh, kilometers into square centimeters. Now what we know that 1 kilometer is equal to 100,000 centimeter. That's what we know. One kilometer is equal to 100,000 centimeters. All right. Now that means one kilometer squared. It means one kilometer times one kilometer. As a result, we are going to multiply this by itself. So we are going to have 10 zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten centimeters squared. So we know that one kilometer squared is equal to this number all right so now let's go now and work it out proper on how we can work it out so step two let, let's now convert since we know that one kilometer squared is equal to uh, one times ten to the power ten actually centimeter squared so we are going to say one kilometer squared is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten centimeter squared out of sixty kilometer squared. So we are going to multiply sixty by that number. So we are going to discover that you are going to have sixty one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten centimeter squared so this is the number that we want first that's the number that we want this is the number which is going to help us when you want to calculate our our area now we can go on and say we can go on and say since one centimeter we need now to, to, to square that we also square 20,000 uh, centimeters this should be equal to so we are going to get that so I'll just abbreviate it as 6 times 10 to the power 11 
over x. So 1 squared, we know that is 1. 20,000 squared, we are going to have 400 million. So that is 400 million. Which is equal to 6 times 10 to the power 11 over x. So when you multiply, we are going to have 2.4 times 10 to the power 20 centimeter squared. So I say it's quite a, a big number actually. So that is on the map. So don't forget to subscribe, comment, and share. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video. Visit our page Genius Plus Zambia for more education news.